my name's Alex. Today I wanted to talk about, you know, the four basic principles of survival. <clears throat> and I categorize these into four, you know, I put them into four categories because it's really, it's what you need to survive. You need water, um, water, food, shelter, and fire. Now, particularly, I, I like to put it in order of water first. So the number one is we're going to talk about water. Water is one of the most, it's like the most important thing you need. And the reason I say that is because, you know, the human body can go two to four weeks without food. And I mean, you'll, you will be malnu uh, malnourished, but you'll be able to actually survive as long as you have water. I think uh, studies show that like the longest person that went without food was a monk, and he, he actually fasted for 365 days. He went 365 days without food. And that was just just drinking water. Um, so that's why I always like to tell people or you know want to teach people that if you get put into a survival situation or you know a natural disaster or something like that, one of the first things you should do is make sure that you have a clean water source or at least a way to purify or filter and purify your water. Now, one thing that I like to carry in my kit that I wanted to talk about, I wanted to show you guys, which I'm going to show a few products um, for the categories, is this uh, the Sawyer water filters. These things right here, you can get them at Walmart for rel relatively cheap, but these water filters right here, as they say they, they're they good for like 10,000 gallons, and yeah, it, it actually will filter your water down to one micron. Um, so one, 0.1 micron, sorry about that, yeah, 0.1 micron and good for 10,000 gallons and they actually tell you with the instructions that you can actually drink this straight from the bag it comes with a, a straw so once you fill up the the pouch and attach the filter to it you can just squeeze the water through it and it'll clean it and filter it down to point one micron which means you could actually drink it I still as a precaution would like to go one step further and boil the water that way you just make sure that you kill all the bacteria anything that's growing in the water algae anything you know that could be harmful or cause dysentery or anything like that but you, water should be your number one concern when it comes to a survival situation and these Sawyer water filters I mean the way I like to keep it in my pack is I keep all of it together and then I put it in a Ziploc baggie and I'll go over this little technique later on and um, in a different series but the reason I do that is because then I can squeeze all the air out and make it more compact I like to do that with everything that I keep in my you know my go bag my um, assault pack anything like that so once you've found water source and you have a way to clean your water you know clean your water filter it out and purify it another thing you should look at is um, making uh, making a fire now you need a fire for multiple reasons one it can give you warmth so if you're in a colder climate you're gonna need heat there's no no way about it you're gonna need a heat source or you know uh, the second thing that you would need fire for is to cook the food that you can gather, collect, or catch, and then you're going to need to purify your water. Which, when you purify your water over a fire, just to give you a little tip, you know, water boils at about 212 degrees, depending on the, the altitude, but the bacteria in water can only survive between 160 to 180. Now, the reason we always tell you to bring it to a boil is because you're not going to sit there with a thermometer and check your water while you're in a survival situation you know the 212 degrees when water starts boiling you know everything's dead it's been dead for you know 32 degrees but 
boil in it is the only indicator, you know, out in the wilderness or anywhere that you can tell just by visually looking that, hey, it's boiling, it's at 212, you're good. All right, so number two is fire. So another little tool that you can get, you can pick these up anywhere at sporting goods stores, Bass Pro Shops, Walmart, is, you know, flint and steel rods or anything like that. Um, these are really compact. I mean, look at that. It's like the size of a whistle. And I like this one because it actually came with the, the strike rod on it. So that makes it a lot easier to have. But um, these are good to keep anywhere. Glove box, car. I mean, these are can fit in your pocket. So I'll go over later on about how to actually use this. But the, the concept's pretty basic. You gather some of your kindling or whatever shavings that you're going to use to start your fire you know you get it into a nice little ball and you strike on it until it actually ignites and then uh, just add air to it to your hot coal but it is you know 2020 so Bic lighters work too super cheap to buy Bic lighters throw them in a Ziploc bag they're waterproof um, so once you get your fire going, you know, that way you can cook your food, cook your food, purify your water, and it gives you a good heat source to dry out, dry out your wet clothes, keep you warm, especially in colder climates. So definitely make sure that you have water and fire. And for your third uh, category, I like to go over is, you know, shelter. So... Like I said, you can go without food. You can go weeks without food. But you're going to need water. You're going to need fire. That way you can purify your water. And then you're going to need some type of shelter from the elements. Now, a good way, you know, to do a shelter is obviously a tent, tarps, you know, big sheets of plastic. But there's also techniques out there that we'll go on, we'll go through later on, is, you know, like bushcraft. You know, building, building you a shelter just completely out of what you can find laying in the woods you know sticks trees grass mud um but once again for something like that you know you're going to want to definitely keep a knife on you in your in your kit um i like to go with camelus knives they're very durable lightweight very strong you know 440 stainless steel titanium bonded but even with this blade right here, it's not a machete, but if I needed to, I, I've actually chopped down small trees with knives like these. So it can work, and it's it, it can work to get bark and collect your firewood, and it can be used to, to help you make a shelter. Um, but in reality, in a survival situation, one of the things you're going to want to look for when you're doing your shelter especially if you're doing something and you don't have any type of tool you don't have knives axes machetes hatchets saws you don't have any of that you're going to want to look for areas in the wooded area or wherever wherever you're at areas that are already partially blo blocked so like big rocks caves as long as there's no wildlife living in there um you know, down trees that you can lean other trees on top of or you can just crawl in. Just anything to get you out of the elements. You know, the weather, the rain, snow, whatever it is, just to give you a little bit of protection from the sun, the wind. So definitely make sure that you have water, fire, and shelter. Now, last thing you're going to want to look for is food. Now, food is all around us, especially here in North America. You know, we some places in America, you know, in the United States, do have desert, which is a little bit harder. That's an entirely different series on survival. But, like, you know, I'm based here in West Virginia, and I should never go hungry. If I get put into a survival situation where we have to forage for our own food, hunt our own food, go fishing, we've got it. I mean, pretty much, I mean, right here, we're sitting at the river right now. We've been doing some diving and fishing today, and, you know, we've caught fish. We've caught enough fish that technically 
I could have had enough protein for two of us for two days with just the small amount of fish we caught today. And then the, you know, snails. We saw a snake today. I'd eat a snake in a heartbeat if I had to. Um, it's just not hard. And then there's all kinds of edible plants. You just got to research the area that you're going to or where you're from, especially if you're ever worried about you know a disaster or a terrorist attack or something happening in your area study the geography of where you live where you're based out of where your family lives that way you have a basic idea of you know what's five plants that i could eat and that you know in my area if i needed to edible plants you know what do they look like where do i find them um what kind of fish are good to eat you know what other things in in you know rivers and lakes and streams that you can eat besides fish because as far as food goes if there's a water source that's going to have all kinds of life in it if it's got fish then it's going to have you know minnows crawdads uh, snapping turtles actually good to eat um, snails believe it or not you can eat snails and like here in West Virginia we have the little seashells is what we call them but they're basically just a freshwater like clam. They look like a little clam or an oyster. You can actually boil those up and eat them. I mean, you're not going get, to get a lot out of it, but you can in a survival situation. So one thing that I do keep on me is like these little mountain house kits. You know, this right here says Best Buy September of 2046. So these typically are these freeze-dried food. Um, they're typically good for like 25 years. So I like to keep these around um, in my pack and stuff. Because, I mean, they're a little bit pricey unless you buy them in bulk. Which I think... I think Walmart has uh, a bucket right now that you can buy. Yeah, one second. She just almost had a fish and he got off right at the rock that we're sitting on. Little rock bass. What is that? A spinner? No, spoon. Oh, using a casting spoon. Let me see that. Let me see. Sorry, I got distracted, guys. Yeah, she's using a little little casting spoon, and the rock bass seem to be liking that. She's using Sanko earlier, but anyways, yeah. Um, like this one here is for two and a half servings. These are good for twenty-five years. And all you do is uh, boil some water, and you just add it to the pouch, let it sit for 10 minutes, and it just rehydrates it and cooks the food for you. So, um, oh, that's what I was saying. Walmart right now has a bucket you can get for, I think, about $20, and it's like 72 hours worth of food, which is a phenomenal deal, but it's not Mountain House, but it's a phenomenal deal, so... I'll put that link in the description too, so you guys can go check out some of those products. Um, but yeah, I, I'm gonna go more in depth later on, and show you like each step of how do you collect the water, how you use the water filtration system, how you can start a fire with nothing but a lighter or, um, you know, flint and steel. I'll go over how to build shelters out of nothing, and then using tarps, and then of course I'm not gonna do a tent because it's it's too easy. So, um, yeah, just stay tuned, and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you got something out of this. Go ahead and uh, hit the like button and subscribe. I've got more to come, and you can also check out our blog. I'll put some stuff up on our blog so you guys have some reading material, and I hope you guys enjoy. Have a good day.